We're here now at Valley Shepherd Creamery in Long Valley, New Jersey, and I am joined by Aaron Weiswall, and he is the owner operator of the creamery and uh, right now head cheesemaker, it looks like. Aaron, come on over and uh, talk with me here. What um, your, your cheese here is a bit different from something we're used to. This cheese is made from, che uh, from sheep's milk. Um, sheep's milk has been used for generations in other countries. Um, but we don't see it a lot here in the U.S. You may see it, you may not know you've been having it. Mm -hmm. For example, in Italian, the word sheep is pecora. So all the pecorino, romano, you've had all your life is sheep milk. Mm -hmm. Roquefort, 100% sheep milk. Well, what do you have here? 120 acres. We are sized up to handle up to 600 dairy sheep. We don't have that many yet because we're busy making our own. Sheep milk is very special. The feel is different, the taste is different, the texture is different, everything is different. Um, when you make cheese from cow milk, you get a different product than you do from sheep milk. How did you come to be a cheese maker? I did many things in my life. The wonderful thing about this is that we get a lot of thank yous. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay, well, Aaron, thanks a lot. And we'll be back to talk more about your operation a bit later. We'll shift our focus now from citrus to cheese. We're back here at Valley Shepherd Creamery in New Jersey. And I must admit, I've never spent a lot of time looking at the ingredient labels on the cheese I buy, but I always assumed it was made from either cow or goat milk. But here, this cheese is made from sheep. It's delicious, but difficult work. We're making a blue cheese today uh, in this vat. Um, and right now we are stirring the curd, which has been formed already. And when the curd gets to the right consistency, we are going to ladle it into these molds. You have found this to be a very popular product for you. We can't keep up. This may look like a greenhouse, but it's where flock manager Amy Rodinger starts each day, where the newest bunch of lambs is growing. I help with the birthing process of their like birthing difficulties. I help them with that. Um, I make sure that they're getting the proper feed that they need. They're getting milked properly. I supervise the milking at night. The adults live in these sprawling, beautiful pastures. But the serene setting <laughs> turns to controlled chaos at milking time. Hundreds of sheep running and sometimes flying, bound for the feeding and milking carousel. So this is your holding pen for the... Uh, Free milking. For the milking yes. episode. And how many, how many sheep would be in here now? We hold groups of about 100 at a time. And then uh, when we're done with 100, we feed another 100 in. Yeah, yeah, your turn is coming. Every four seconds, a sheep walks onto the rotating carousel and while eating a special snack of grain and molasses, gets milk twice a day. So not only are they getting milk, but at the same time, the transponders on their ears are talking to the computers upstairs and the little meters underneath are reading their milk and the condition. Then it's out of the safety brace and off the line with 100 more sheep waiting their turn cheese, crafted and aged in a cold mountain cave. And this is your cave dug into the hill. Inside, more than 20 varieties of sheep's milk cheese. Brick after brick, wheel after wheel, aged anywhere from two weeks to 18 months. After being on the shelf, you'll notice some of the cheese will start to form white and green mold. Uh, once you see that mold form, somebody will come up to the cave, uh, whether it be myself or somebody else that works on the farm, and will rub the cheese. And so this is the rubbing this process. This is the rubbing process. You, you take your wheel of cheese and you can see a little white mold here. Mm -hmm. You want to just, you rub it. Mm -hmm. You do exactly like you said. You rub the sides and you rub the top. And, and, and you're rubbing And it. you're rubbing bad mold off. So crema, uh, crema de blue, like a creamy gorgonzola almost. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a nice bite to it. This batch is a little, a little stronger, more, bites back more than the last batch did. It does a little yeah. bit, yeah. It's, it's still very, very creamy like the last so batch should, though, which is nice. So good. Christine Ayers drives 40 miles to find that perfect ingredient. Everyone will be excited. They've been asking, when are you getting that blue cheese back? <laughs>
And that's Aaron's daughter dishing up the delights. This was an alpine style experiment. Mm -hmm. um, and it came out with a little bit more body and a little bit more flavor. And mm -hmm. it's closer now to a Comte or Gruyere. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite cheeses. Near just about I want you to know I'm a... I'm like a Velveeta or Cheese Whiz guy, you know, so this okay. is quite a treat for me. Most people start out that way, <laughs> discover us. I and... sort of wound up that way. <laughs> um. And where will the future of the creamery wind up? Probably a small co-op, a partnership of several young people that have the energy to keep doing what I'm doing, because you need three of them to do what I do. <laughs> um, is the way to go on if my kids don't want it. Uh, time will tell. Well, this cute little lady's only five days old, but one day soon she'll be making her way to that carousel, doing her part in helping to turn out cheese and gelato products for all of us to enjoy. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that's our show for today. We thank you for watching. I'm Paul Ryan, and we want to see you next time right here in America's Heartland. Now, you go play. There you go. Enough of me.